So on uh, my post a couple days ago, um, in my video about how you're not running out of time, somebody commented on the post on Reddit, basically saying that, you know, they wish that they could stop feeling like they were running out of time to find um, a, a husband and have a family and, you know, that they're watching their friends who don't know anything about this, uh, finding love and, fall, you know, getting married and whatever, getting on with the typical life. And I've been thinking about this, it keeps coming back to my mind over the last couple of days, because I um, replied to her, how would you feel if you knew that you could have babies until you were 70? And she said, oh, you know, oh my God, I'm tearing up thinking about it. That would be so great. So um, what that tells me is that, first of all, um, I don't think that people have too many desires that are not real desires. Um, <clears throat> I think that when you feel a desire for something, it's, it's you know, um, something that you're supposed to do and that you will do. And I think the fact that you feel the desire in the first place is a pretty good sign that if you can sort of figure your way out of the mental prison, that you're going to get it. Like, I don't think you really need to worry about um, having a desire that is just never to be fulfilled. It just doesn't make sense. Um, <clears throat> you have to really buy into the scarcity world. I mean, if, if you're even remotely like, um, bought into the fact that you create your own world, that you're God, all that stuff, um, you know, you, you should be able to sort of kick that thought out of your mind that there's just desires that you have that are just your cross to bear and that kind of thing. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, um, <clears throat> that you're not cursed and that it's not meant to be that you have this desire that will never be fulfilled. Now it comes to the time limit. And I understand that, you know, when it comes to the biological clock, um, you know, that's a really tough one. Um, I didn't even really want kids. And when I was 33, starting from about 33 to 35, uh, I had a horrible mental crisis about the fact that I had made a decision not to have kids, essentially. And, uh, you know, that brought up all kinds of fear about growing old and being alone and, you know, all this stuff. And um, so it's, I think that can be very hard for women, especially if you kind of, and uh, I was at the, under the impression kind of that you had to like sort of get it done by 35, which um, one of my best friends is 41 and six months pregnant right now, and she got pregnant on her first try. So, you know, um, I'm not sure that all the hype around that is really something we should be worrying about anyway. But uh, back to the <clears throat> time limit. Now, what it tells me if, if it would be so relieving if the biological clock didn't exist and you could do it pretty much whatever, you know, whenever you wanted... That tells me that all of the strain is coming from a sense of obligation that you don't want, period. Uh, wrapped up in this healthy, normal desire is the fear that it will never happen. And from the fear comes a sense that you can never rest from trying to find it because if you rest for one second, your fear may be realized. So I, I think, I think first of all, you should recognize that you don't want that pressure. Um, maybe you're not aware that you don't want the pressure, but you don't want it. You would ideally like to not have to worry about this right now in your present moment. Um, and I know that seems obvious, but I, I, it's, it's sort of, while it's obvious, think about it you don't actually want that right now, like this minute, you would be fine with taking your time. So it's not something that you want right now. It's that you feel obligated to be finding it right now. So there's that aspect of it. You don't, your feelings are not about a desire. They are about an obligation. And, you know, the other thing is um, with with the biological clock, I, you know, um, when I used to think about ad possibly adopting a child, um, the idea just kind of 
I was never really, I never really wanted to be a mother, but the idea, I was like, well, no, but if I was going to be a mother, I, it would have to be my own kid. Um, I think you really need to re-examine how true that really is for you. Think about the people that you love that you're not related to. Um, you know, like you meet somebody, you fall in love with them. They're not your biological boyfriend. Uh, they're a completely uh, random stranger that you didn't know before, usually. And um, you still love that person like crazy. So I think it helps a lot with the biological clock to open your mind to the idea that the way a child will come into your life, if that's your desire, may not be through biology. And if you're reacting violently to that statement, you know exactly where you need to be doing the work on that belief. Um, and so let's recap, okay? So number one belief is that you want it right now. Um, if you would be happy, if, if there was no pressure for you to do it right now, you don't actually want it right now. Two, if your um, belief is that you have a desire that is just destined to never be fulfilled, uh, okay, got to work on that. That's that's just absurd. It's just doesn't make sense. Plus, you're the creator. You can do what you want. You gotta you gotta work on that one. And third is the belief that your child must come to you through biology. You know, um, the other day I and I'm speaking sort of from my own personal recent experience. You know, the other day. I've had this idea that I really, really didn't want to be in a relationship with a man that had kids. I've never dated somebody who had kids. And I, you know, I still kind of don't like the idea, but it occurred to me, what if I met somebody and he had a kid and I just completely fell in love with this kid? Like for, it just hit me. Um, I'm not even a kid person, but I thought, why is my mind so closed to that possibility? That could happen. How wonderful, you know, we just want love in our lives and we think we know how we're going to get it. Um, and, I, you know, I think when you open your mind, uh, you know, sometimes you realize all on your own that you're not as rigid about things as you thought. Um, if that makes sense. You know, if you still really don't want, you know, I still kind of don't really want to date somebody who has kids, but, um, you know, uh, and so I'm going to, uh, unless I have a good reason not to, I'm just going to go ahead and create a guy that doesn't have any kids yet. Um, but it's good to be open-minded if for no other reason than to sort of get to the point where you can get out of the mental prison you're in. You know what I mean? You can always change your mind back later. <laughs> you don't have to decide a new thing and stay there. The key is getting out of this place in your mind where you're in a frenzy, where, as my ex likes to say, you have the thing in a chokehold. He, he always, he's told me for years, you have this relationship thing in a chokehold. And he's right. I'm like, it has to be this way. It has to be with this kind of guy. And it has to happen by the time I'm 40. This stuff is all so dumb. And you will realize that when you let it go. So one, believe you're the creator. Two, believe if you have a desire that you can and will create it and that it is in a way meant to be created because it's a desire from God, you. And then try to let go of your self-imposed ideas about how the thing you want has to show up. And if you can do that, you might find that you're open to it showing up other ways. I hope that helps.